crystal technology is super important in rise of kingdoms when you finally reach the end game and you start to experience some of these season of conquest kvks but if you're a free-to-play player or a low spender then upgrading this technology in the wrong order could be super detrimental to your pvp performance in kvk so today i'm going to give you guys my guide to crystal technology and rise of kingdoms because i haven't talked about this in a really long time but first what's going on guys cheers now the first thing you want to do when you enter your kvk map on day one hopefully you're online at reset and you jump into the lost kingdom at the exact moment that it opens the first thing that you want to do is build your crystal mine build your research center and you want to max out the crystal mine level you want to get to level 25 and the reason that this is so important especially for free-to-play players and low spenders is because the level of this building determines how many crystals you're going to be producing every hour and your maximum crystal production the sooner you max out this building the more more hours in kvk you're going to be getting the most amount of crystals over time passively now this is different from the upgrade strategy for the crystal research center because the crystal cost reduction here especially at the earlier levels isn't super game changing especially because the earlier technologies also aren't that expensive and so in general you can pretty much push the level of the crystal research center as you need to do it as you're progressing through your technology because some technology the bottleneck will be the level Level of your crystal research center and that's when you know that okay now it's time to go ahead and upgrade the crystal research center okay with all that out of the way let's go over the order with which I would recommend you upgrade your crystal tech if you're a free to play or low spender now the important thing to know here is what are you actually getting when you're progressing through your crystal tech now there's some things here that are going to make your progression a little bit cheaper there's some PVE things here like damage to barbarians or the Karaku there's going to be some technology that gets you more crystals but mainly what you're trying to focus on is your pvp stats and the only pvp stats that you have here for free to play players are bonuses to your attack bonuses to your march speed extra troop capacity and later down the line you're going to get your hands on probably some all damage increase as well but the goal isn't to max out your crystal tech i mean you don't really need bonus damage to rallies and garrisons unless you're an actual whale you also probably don't need the extra marches in the open field especially if you're a free to play or low spender and you definitely don't need things like rally capacity if you're not going to be launching rallies so you definitely want to make sure that you're upgrading this in an optimal order and in order to show that off I'm going to use the crystal tech simulator that was made by speco that is the individual that also made the rock battle simulator that's what we're going to be using here on the screen because it keeps track of your total crystal spent and it will also tell you what prerequisites that you need in order to progress further so I'm not sponsored by speco I have no affiliation with this project it's just something that I find super useful so I'll link to it in the description below but the first goal that you should have here is getting skillful operation maxed out okay this is essentially going to make every future crystal tech that you research a little bit cheaper so you want to get this as soon as possible so in order to do that you're going to get one point in all of the different troop attacks here this is your war tech basically it's just straight up attack then you put one point in swift marching one point into larger camps and oh it looks like you need the crystal research center to level four so let's go over here and let's upgrade it to level four and boom now you can see that the crystal cost reduction is upgraded in the simulator because that's actually what happens when you upgrade your crystal research center but once you get that to level four then boom you can upgrade skillful operation only up to level two from here i would bring swift marching one up to level three this is going to give you three percent extra march speed which is nice but also it's a prerequisite to getting a larger camps three then you can bring skillful operation up to four but you'll see that you need crystal research center level 12. so now you go ahead and bring this all the way up to level 12. so you can see here we've already spent 1.4 million crystals and boom we have finished skillful operation one with 1.5 million crystals spent hopefully you had a lot of crystal chests left over from your previous kvk to really help you get there really quickly once the lost kingdom opens next you want to bring treaties one up to four and right now that's the highest that you can bring it and then you want to bring cultural exchange up to four as well the reason for this is because both of these are going to help you with the bastions that you're going to do on day one you have to do bastions every single day especially if you're a free to play player but you really should be doing it no matter what type of player 
you are and if you can get both of these to four before you do your first day's bastions which honestly you probably should be able to do that because your alliance and your kingdom is going to have to go into the map and then build your fort and then build some territory and connect to the different bastions so you should have a little bit of time to get these treaties and culture exchange up to four before you do those bastions that way you can get the maximum amount of crystals and favor from that first day one and moving forward throughout the rest of kbk this is going to be very useful now our next goal is going to be to come over here to skillful operations too because the sooner we get this the more crystals we can save in the long run so let's go ahead and try to make our way over to skillful operation two we have to go ahead and get barbarian reports one karaku reports one karaku gift plunder one attack formation one and then we can start to put points into our war tech two so this is again the attack for the different troop types so let's go ahead and oh it looks like we hit a barrier we need to go crystal research center 16. so we were at 12 this whole time so now we're going to go ahead up to 16. from there we're going to go ahead and put one point into each of these and one point into swift marching two one point into marching orders and oh it turns out we need swift marching two to level three so we can't just gun our way over here to skillful operation two unfortunately but we did unlock the extra march speed which i said is one of the most valuable things you can get from crystal tech so let's see how much we can upgrade this and two out of ten is the most that we can do so it's basically saying we have to max out our war tech one which is literally the first thing that you get which we will do in just a second but i also recommend putting an extra point into plunder and karaku's gift because this is just going to give you more crystals from the trial of the kokurok and also from all the barbs that you're going to be hitting anyway that's also the highest that you can bring these without maxing out these techs here so that's why we don't take those any further for more reward however we can get cultural exchange two to level two and treaties two to level two and these are also going to help you with your daily bastions so go ahead and do that then i would come all the way back to the beginning here and we're going to max out your war tech one so start of course with the troop type that you find is most powerful for your account so if you're an infantry player start with this if you're a cavalry player start with this you get the drill realistically these aren't super expensive but you will have to do all of them even the siege unfortunately unless you are one of those players that is a ranged player in which case the siege is going to be a great investment for you from there you can max out swift marching one which is going to give you a total of five percent march speed which is really nice we can now bring swift marching two up to level three which means we can unlock marching orders one and now we finally have skillful operation two we want to bring this as high as we can and right now we have to get our crystal research center to level 20. so this is going to start to get expensive but there we go we are up to crystal research center level 20 and then we come back over here to the skillful operation two and the highest we can bring it is level six and the bottleneck here is marching orders one to level seven and if you guys remember before free to play players do not care about marching orders one at all it literally doesn't matter except for rallying forts and stuff like that i suppose but realistically you don't need this for pvp and so we want to try to avoid this as much as we can for now so let's go back to barbarian reports one and karaku reports one we're gonna have to max these out eventually so go ahead and bring these to five they are gonna help you deal more damage to the pve content that you might be struggling with if you're a free-to-play player right when you land in the lost kingdom and once you bring those to five you can bring these up to four which is going to give you even more crystals from doing the things that you should be doing as soon as possible anyway now you can't take these any higher there is a bottle neck here which we're going to address in just a second but then you can come back to cultural exchange and treaties and max those out that's going to help you the most with your bastions for sure now one quick note that I want to put here is that we did max out the attack and march speed first before we did the barbarian reports Karaku reports treaties one and cultural exchange one that's because in my opinion these stats are more valuable in case you do end up in a PvP scenario you want to make sure that you actually got these out of the way however if you find that grinding barbarians and doing the Kokarok is really challenging for you maybe this is your first season of conquest ever then perhaps you can go ahead and do barbarian reports Karaka reports soldier exchange and treaty one perhaps you could do those before you max out the war tech one here it's just either way it works and either way you'll end up at this same point so keep that in mind from here I would bring cultural exchange two all the way up to seven and treaties two also all the way up to seven then you can go ahead and unlock barbarian reports two Karaka reports two and then you can 
can put two points into the second ones here these are the, what's going to give you even more crystals from doing the things that you've already been doing again you can't take these any farther there is a bottleneck but you did finally unlock call to arms one which is how you're going to get more troop capacity but there is a bottleneck here as well so now we can go all the way back to plunder one and karaku's gift one and we can finish those off which means we can then bring karaku's gift two up to four and plunder two also up to four and now you can finally start investing in call to arms and i would bring this as high as you possibly can and that is going to be level six and that's going to get you an extra four percent troop capacity which is very meaningful guys the more troops that you have the more damage you're going to deal you've also now unlocked the ability to invest in your third round of war technology this is more attack stats for your troops so i would focus on the troop type again that you think is most powerful on your account so for me it would be infantry i would invest in this but it looks like we have another bottleneck here so we have to bring our crystal research center all the way up to level 23 now and you can see here we've already spent 13 million crystals so again if you're a free-to-play player and low spender you are gonna have to be very active every day and especially early on in the kvk right like it is a race at the beginning you want to get as much of this done before pvp and before fighting as possible that way your account is in the best shape it can be for the rest of the kvk now that we've done the crystal research center to 23 we can bring our troop attack up to level three and we could do that for all of the different troop types here and unfortunately that does mean we have to do it for siege as well because that's what unlocks swift marching three and this is more march speed so very good stuff here we want to put as many points into this as we can and the maximum is four so that's going to get you another two percent march speed as well which is very nice and now you've made your way pretty far into the tech tree like you've unlocked a lot of things here at this point and one of the important things to get is special medicines this is going to reduce the healing cost of tier five units which is very valuable the sooner you can get this before your pvp fights the better however what i want you guys to notice is that this is going to give you a healing cost reduction in increments of half a percent and special medicine two over here gives you healing cost reduction in increments of one percent and it's actually going to be cheaper right so healing cost minus two percent is one hundred and twenty-five thousand crystals to get two percent healing reduction here well that's that's way more crystals right now there is also the upfront cost of unlocking special medicine two which is going to be marching orders two so let's go ahead and see how much it costs to do that and oof, we have to bring this up to three so unfortunately the highest you can bring this is two realistically it'll cost a total of four hundred and twenty-five thousand crystals to get there you have the 300k for marching orders two plus you have the 125k from the actual special medicines two but getting two percent from special medicines one is okay well that's that's 350 plus this is 400 plus this is 500 so it's actually more expensive to bring special medicines one up to four than it is to unlock and get special medicines two to two and you get the same benefit there but you also will have a bigger rally capacity for doing barb forts so you might as well go for special medicines two to level two first and then do special medicines one up to level four so there we go and now you can also invest in call to arms two this is going to give you even more troop capacity so i would go as high as you can here and it's only level two unfortunately but still that's an extra three percent troop capacity which is really nice let's get our hands on more march speed so we're going to come all the way back down to swift marching two and we're going to bring that up to six so from here you actually have an extra three and a half percent march speed from that tech which is nice and then you can put a couple of points into attack formation you can bring that up to three and remember attack formation is very expensive so you are gonna have to grind a lot for this but it's attack for all your troop types so if you're running at least one army of each troop type you can think of this as one and a half percent attack you could look at this as three percent attack right because you're getting it for all your armies so it is expensive but it does give you a lot of bang for your buck but now we're at a point where we're gonna have to invest a lot into the attack here for the war tech two and again you want to focus on the troop type that you care the most about so for me would be infantry but also there's another thing i want you guys to notice here right if you bring attack formation from three to four you're going to get an extra half a percent attack and now that's multiplied towards let's say three different armies because you have one of each troop type but you can also get one and a half percent attack by upgrading each of these one time boom boom and boom and it's actually cheaper to do that i don't know if you guys noticed but it's 102,000 for each one of those to bring it to level two which is a total of 306 thousand which is cheaper 
than the 382,000 from attack formation. So you get the same benefit for less crystals. So you might as well do it. Now you could continue to do that cost value analysis back and forth between attack formation and the war tech two, and just choose whichever one gives you the most value. But if you want to progress more into the tech tree and you want to get more value out of some of the PVE tech, then what I'm going to recommend is actually just leaving attack formation where it is and upgrading your individual troop stats, skipping siege for as long as you possibly can. So how many of these can we get? We can bring it all the way up to nine, which is super expensive. Okay. But you are going to get a lot of stats for doing this. Now, of course, if let's say you're not running an archer March, well, then you could do this one last and kind of ignore it for a while, but bringing it up to nine gives you 7% attack for each troop type. That's really nice. Very expensive by the way, but it's going to help you a ton in PVP from there. We can bring marching orders one up to five because that's going to be a bottleneck for us. And then we can focus on getting some more PVE benefits here in the form of barbarian reports and Karaka reports. Now, luckily these are pretty cheap which is really nice but I would focus on the one that you need the most help with so if you're really struggling with trial of Kokarok then do this one first if you're struggling with barb chains then go ahead and do this one first ultimately you're going to do both either way I would probably do the Karaku one first depending on how many stages of the Kokarok have already been opened because then you could bring Korok's gift two up to level six which is going to give you 34 percent crystal gain speed which is very nice you can bring barbarian reports two up to five and bring plunder up to six as well for even more crystals when doing barbarians now let's just stop for a second and observe where we are we still haven't finished larger camps all right which is going to be a bottleneck very soon but let's see if we can get any more of those stats that we care the most about which is march speed troop capacity and all damage can we get more from swift marching two we cannot we have to max all these out and that includes siege which is going to be really expensive expensive so we can't do that we can't do skillful operation which would reduce the crystal cost for us can we do call to arms we can't do call to arms and we can't do swift marching three either and we can't add any more to call to arms two and we can't do any improved morale can't do special medicines two special medicines one can't go past four like we said earlier we still have that two percent so we're kind of stuck we can't get any more of the stats that we care the most about so at this point I would recommend coming back to attack formation and you can add as many points here as you can. So you go up to attack formation six. This is going to give you 4% attack for all your troop types. So that's a total of 12% troop attack, which is nice. And larger camps is finally going to be a big bottleneck for us. So now we come back to larger camps and we finish this off. Then we can come back to attack formation and bring that up to seven, which is five and a half percent for all troop types. And now that this is at seven, we can actually finish off each of these different attacks for the different troop types again prioritize the one that you care about and we've left it for last but now we have to do siege all the way up to 10 which is super expensive kind of a waste kind of annoying we have no choice but to do that because we can't move forward with swift marching two so let's go ahead and max this out and then we can bring swift marching two up to seven and then again we want call to arms but we need skillful operation two to seven and to get that to seven we need marching orders one to seven so we have no choice but to do that bring this up to seven and then from here you, you kind of have two choices if you are about to get into a fight like if you're about to do some pvp i would recommend doing call to arms one as high as you can okay but if you've got like days until your next fight then maybe you could bring skillful operation up to level nine those last two 700 000 crystals is a lot for a two percent reduction in crystal cost but again if you've got some breathing room then you can go ahead and do that which will make your call to arms even cheaper but again if you're about to get into a fight really soon i would just do just go just bite the bullet and go all in on call to arms from there you have two choices you can either focus on some pve bonuses for more damage here or again if you're about to get into a fight i would recommend going for swift marching three you can bring this up to a maximum of six now before you're going to have to go back and before you hit a bottleneck basically i'm going to assume that you're going to get your extra march speed here i put a lot of value on march speed especially if you're an infantry main but again you can do some of the pve stuff which you would then do after swift marching so it's you can flip flop those depending on what you need right away so you would then bring barbarian reports to up to eight rock reports also up to eight and the reason that you're bringing them to eight and not higher is because that is the prerequisite to Karaku's gift and plunder too you can then bring these up to eight as well and then you really want call to arms which means you're gonna have to bring skillful operation to up to 10 which is very expensive for an extra one percent reduction there really at this point just a bottleneck unfortunately but then you can complete call to arms one which is
is 15 percent troop capacity very good stuff and i mean look we're talking about 40 million crystals at this point like this is really expensive guys you really especially as a free to play player you really have to be grinding barbs starting very early on in kvk i can't stress that enough i don't want to act like this is easy to do this is not easy to do you have to be a dedicated player okay you have to play every day and i'll get into some tips a little bit later in the video next is the daunting task of finishing off attack formation i know it's gonna take a lot of crystals here but remember you're getting a ton of stats for all your troop types so you will have to grind away and slog through the final stages of attack formation the reason for that is because you want to get your hands on improved morale this is like bonus damage you want this you need marching orders two to level five what do you need to get there oh you need attack formation regardless so that's why we did it we just got it out of the way we also need research center to level 24 so we're going to come all the way back and finally upgrade to level 24 then we can bring marching orders to level five which means we should be able to put some points into improve morale let's go so you can bring it up to two that's the highest you can go then you can come back to to marching orders to bring it up to seven and then you can bring improve morale as high as you can bring it which is up to six then you can put as many points into call to arms two as you want and that's going to give you more troop capacity very good now if you ever see my special medicines just suddenly at two it's because for some reason the save state is not saving that right so I guess that's just a little glitch in the kvk tech simulator not a big deal but in case you guys noticed that throughout this video just keep that in mind from here remember you do want more march speed but you have to get the war tech three up to level seven so you can either start to do that or you can put more points into special medicine too and which whichever one you decide to go with is going to depend on how many tier five units are you using are you using a lot of tier five units if you are like let's say you're about to go into king's land or pass seven or something insane then i would say just cut your losses on the troop attack and go as far into special medicines too as you can that's going to save you so many resources from your hospital bills it's actually insane so please consider doing that but if you have some time before that before your next big fight then perhaps you can start to stack up on some more attack here personally I think the you know slightly better trades you're going to get from the extra attack is not going to offset the massive hospital bill you're going to be saving by getting 11 percent reduction here that's just my opinion again you could choose either or or some combination in between the two from there though if you want to make any meaningful progress at all then you do have to bring your war tech to seven so again I would just do this in whatever order makes the most sense for your main troop type so you can bring these up to seven and then you would do obviously siege last bring that up to seven and then you can bring swift marching three as high as it can go which is all the way up to nine and then from there you're gonna bring call to arms two as high as you can get it which is nine and then from there you can choose between call to arms two and special medicines one again if you're like about to go fighting maybe you want to go for special medicines one it's literally cheaper right so you you can get it with less crystals but remember that extra troop capacity is going to help you hit like a truck now also keep in mind like we're 60 million crystals in I don't even know how far you can get here before King's land, right? Like if you're a free to play player, like even if you're grinding a ton, I am not free to play. So I can't say for sure, but like you would, pr you're probably going to struggle to get to this point to be completely honest with you guys. Okay. So just keep that in mind. We're entering into hypothetical territory at this point. If you're an insane player, then, you know, you can keep going on the rest of this uh, order perhaps this is mainly for the low medium and high spenders but I would personally go with a combination of special medicine and call to arms too depending on what you can afford at this point like you're starting to look at an insane amount of crystals right so I would finish special medicines one try to do as high as call to arms as you can try to get as many special medicines too as you can and then at this point you can't really progress any farther and I mean realistically again we're not gonna we're not talking about like free to play at this point okay because you got to max out war tech three and I just don't see you doing that as free to play uh, I mean like come on like what are we doing here okay so boom then he would max out swift marching then you could do marching order and then you could do improve morale finish off call to arms and uh yeah at that point I mean you're you're kind of giga chatting all over the place here you can finish off the crystal research center and get expanded formations one and now you are literally in mega whale territory you are now swarming down all your structures so again everything getting past your third war tech to seven is like all hypothetical in my opinion like you have to be a crazy free-to-play player and be very active from day one okay now that we know how expensive it is to progress through the later 
stages of that crystal tech how are you going to compete as a free-to-play player well first of all barb chaining barb chaining barb chaining you have to start early and do it often basically all kvk i know it's a grind i know it can be boring i know a lot of players can't do it that much every day they have a job they have school but if you are truly free to play like that is going to be a massive source of crystals for you as well as some other goodies as well so that means running multiple armies with circular or half circular aoe's healing factors sustainable armies that you can leave out and just constantly be doing chaining over and over and over again on top of that you're going to have to complete as many of these challenges as you can in the crystal quest so every day you have to be doing all of these okay this should not be hard one kahara day one fort a day all your bastion quests 10 barbs log in all that's easy weekly quests all this should be doable as well maybe the troop training power is not something you can do every week but you should try to do it and time it with a bastion that wants you to increase your troop power of course that would make the most sense but alliance building barb grinding all this stuff is straightforward and then of course the season challenges as well should be relatively straightforward except for possibly the sovereign keys you might not be able to do this you know you should be saving your sovereign keys for kvk to dump for this quest i'm too impulsive i never do that right so unless you save up for it you're not gonna be able to do it like you're not gonna get 200 keys during the kvk right so you have to save in advance in order to get this that's something you have to plan for beforehand but the barb quests killing the barbs should be straightforward bastion quest straightforward logging in straightforward support skills straightforward troop power you'll I mean depending on how many of the training quests you're doing you'll probably get this and you'll probably want to because that gives you 200 experience which gets you a long way because every five levels here you're going to get some amount of crystals so keep that in mind uh you want to get as far through the crystal quest as you can even if you are free to play and you don't have the advanced treasures unlocked it's still beneficial to do that speaking of things you should do every day make sure that you push trial of the Kokarok as soon as you possibly can like as soon as the next difficulty opens you want to beat it or get as far through it as you can because this is another source of you know crystals for you as a free to play low spender whatever you want as many crystals as possible and the sooner you do it the more you're going to collect those crystals over time so very important stuff here and then of course before a big fight you want to use your kahar bone whistles you're going to get some nice chunks of crystals from the car bone whistle so again save it so you can do one every single day and do it with your bastion quests but you know if you've got a couple left over before a big fight you know use them bring bring yourself down to like one bone whistle or something like that so that way you have the most crystals going into that fight as possible now i also want to go over some of the purchases that you should consider making in kvk if you are a low medium or high spender in rise of kingdoms because this will make a big impact on your crystal technology progression the moment you enter the lost kingdom you should consider purchasing purchasing the premium season crystal supply this is a five dollar bundle and this is going to give you crystals every single day when you log in and it's also going to instantly give you 50 percent crystal mine work speed which is actually insane if you take a look here the season supply is an instant 50 percent it's going to take you a long time doing bastions and increasing the bastion levels before your bastion boost reaches 50 percent or higher so i can't stress this enough if you don't spend anything else during kvk that five dollar bundle is the most value you're going to get out of any singular purchase now another purchase you could consider making would be unlocking the advanced treasures in the crystal quest now, the reason for this is because it's 15 dollars, which is still relatively low spender friendly and you're going to get access to millions of crystals on top of that you're going to be getting sovereign keys speed ups crystal keys stars gold keys and a bunch of other things along the way as you progress throughout your kvk and so for a total of 20 dollars, those would be the best value that you can get throughout all of kvk the medium and large spenders should consider all of the pop-up bundles and then the heavy spenders and whales should consider the mountain warfares and possibly even the super value bundles like the conquerors will anyway guys with that being said hopefully you guys found this crystal tech guide useful if you did drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel it's kind of helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload another rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on this again I don't want to make it seem like it's possible to max tech as a free-to-play player before Kingsland I don't think it is I genuinely think the math is not there but the point of this video is to just guide you through as much of it as you possibly can get through before those big fights happen anyway guys with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace